it's four o'clock and so as ever we are live with Adam hello <laughs> that's me it is hello so before we do our comments uh, because last week we did the first ever comments of the week we've got four stories to talk about before we get to the best comments uh, and the first one it's a bit nuts I'm not sure how much I like this video no it's very it, it's strange it's about gun control and we've can that's not the word of mine. <laughs> We've joined together two stories here. We saw a, a piece this morning about how a guy in the United States is now training teachers how to conceal guns. Uh, and That's all after the Sandy Hook shooting, yes. the elementary school shooting, um, where lots and lots of people were calling for teachers to be armed so that they could take down anybody that came into the school to shoot the kids. Yeah, and it's a very strange video, uh, but the logic perhaps works on the surface of it that should a teacher have been in that school that day, perhaps he would have been stopped, uh, maybe. But another line we hear about the, the reason why America is so keen to keep hold of their guns, we heard it in our debate about gun control, if you want to check that out, is that those people fear tyranny. Yeah. They fear tyranny from their government, and they believe that if they have no weapons, then the tyranny will come forth and their government will go crazy and <laughs> do whatever it likes. Kind of does have some logic if you're... Yeah. I don't know, really, really keen on keeping it guns. It has some logic that perhaps if your government went mental and you had guns, maybe you could do an armed resistance. The government is held to account by your armed presence. But it made us think when we saw a video this morning of the kind of weaponry the United States government does indeed have. Lends the idea that should the government go rogue, you probably don't stand a chance. So probably not. You've got no chance. No chance. Let's take a look at this video that's filmed in Kandahar province in January of this year. Really no oh my god! <laughs> Everything is oh gone! My god. I can't even zoom out any farther. There's nobody in there! <laughs> That's the first thing I've ever seen in my life. Concealed handguns are not going to do you much favour if your government does go rogue. Do you know what that reminds me of? There's a, there's a Bill Hicks sketch where, where he's talking about the, the first Gulf War and he yeah. says, oh, let's see what G14 does. And then, exactly. Cool. Let's fire another one. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's an incredible clip. I think the reaction to it was kind of strange because this video, you, some of you guys may have seen it. It was on the front page of Reddit this morning where we get a lot of our videos from, but hey, at least we admit it. Um, <laughs> But th th that was there this morning, and the response is kind of like, wow, that is cool, but that is that cool. It's not cool. Everybody in that video is going, yes, they're dead. Yeah. It's We've just killed someone. Brilliant. Very, very bizarre. But ultimately, maybe that would make you think twice about thinking you can take on your government with handguns. You can't. <laughs> um, the next story we've got, I think this is my favorite story today. All right. Uh, I'm going to call this story the Space Glider story. This is cool. It is cool. So a guy called David Winstrahl. I think I've got that right. He's a guy from Sweden. He has his own website called RC Explorer. Uh, he's 24 years old. He's done an incredible project, and he's tried to get a remote control plane to the edge of space and glide it back. I will do it no justice. Let's take a look at the video. Hi, I'm David, and this is my attempt to send a radio control airplane into the edge of space using a weather balloon and then pilot it down using a live video feed. At the ground, I'm having real troubles with the ground station. A cable is broken and I lost all video contact with the plane. The balloon finally burst at 33,103 meters above ground level. Now I'm in trouble. I was supposed to release the plane from the balloon before it burst. Now there's a big chance of the plane getting tangled in the balloon, which would not be good. 20 minutes later, as I'm about to give up, I see a flicker of an image on my screen again. The image is so faint that I'm having trouble making out what is what at this point. I'm starting to pilot the plane as best as I can, and I think I can see a sun. About 10 minutes of gliding later, I'm getting ready to penetrate the clouds. I still have a video link, although it's very faint. Unfortunately, I didn't make my goal of landing the airplane at my feet, but I still got some really amazing footage. Amazing! That is the point, isn't it? it, it didn't, his dream was to land the plane at his feet. He didn't quite manage it, but that is cool. The next time as well, like, I, 
I've often wondered this because the, the whole helium balloon to the edge of space thing kicked off a few years ago. Yeah, it's been done quite a few times. As it's, well, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's reasonably cheap for young science students to have a go. I've always wondered how long it would be before someone put a remote control plane on the bottom of one of these things. And it looks like Sweden has got... Oh, someone well, from Sweden. Has what, what, yeah, they've won the space race. <laughs> they've won the remote control <laughs> space race. Why, why didn't you do it if you had the idea? Because uh, it's a lot of money. Those balloons, weather balloons are about about three hundred pounds, right? Uh, you know, which is not yeah, an unreasonable think amount. Think about the money you could get from having a million hits on YouTube from doing it. Indeed, See? indeed. So that's what I'm thinking. Of. So yeah, it's it's a really cool story. If you want to check out his website, he's got it's that's not the only cool project he's done. He's done quadcopters, helicopters, little drones. He just basically does really cool stuff. Also, that was quite a heavily edited down version. It's about a nine minute video, but the the, the images are amazing. Yeah, do check it out. Uh, so we might as well move on to our next story. Yep. And this one's a super. We just saw the footage and thought you needed to see this. This is two skiers in Italy, incredibly close to an avalanche. Let's have a look. Too close for comfort. Yeah, way, way too close. And the best thing is they've, they've got to then ski down that valley that the avalanche went into, yeah. which is going to be very, very difficult and I would, I would imagine quite scary, quite yeah. terrifying. Yeah. But of all the places you'd like to be, clinging to the side of a cliff when an avalanche happens just yeah. outside its reach is probably better than being just inside its reach. Indeed. No thanks. I, I'm saying <laughs> no to going to the top of an Italian mountain uh, at this point in time. So, but there you go. Even though I just came back from, <laughs> from a snowboard trip. But let's quickly move on, because that made no sense whatsoever. The last story is about Fukushima, which you know the most about. Yeah, all right. So it, today is the second anniversary of the tsunami, uh, the earthquake, and the nuclear disaster that hit Japan. Um, and there's still a lot of problems going on um, around the Fukushima region and around Japan in general. Uh, there's problems with power supply, things like that. There's a debate about whether or not they should restart using nuclear power stations. Um, in the in the region itself, mm -hmm. um, there has been some good news. Radiation levels in some parts have fallen by forty percent um, in the last year, yeah. and they're predicted to fall by another forty percent in the next two years. Yeah. So things are starting to get slightly better, but on the other hand, it's going to take thirty to forty years yes. to get rid of the uh, spent fuel that's inside the reactors and to isolate it properly. Um, and the decommissioning process is so slow, yeah. that there's a lot of public anger about it. And have people been protesting about it? People have been protesting about it, um, but, and also the fact that they, some people are saying that they're not getting the right levels of compensation, so they're not getting the value of their property when the earthquake happened yeah. and, and all that stuff. Do we have a video of it? We do have video of it. There's protests, and there's also a guy from Greenpeace who's talking about the compensation levels. Let's take a look. <laughs> If you just think of the numbers of people involved, uh, 160,000 people were forced to evacuate their homes from around the nuclear power plant. Uh, an unknown number of voluntary evacuations, which basically means people didn't believe the government line, that where they were living was safe, that the radiation was not significant. And within all that kind of those kind of raw figures, you have a lot of human tragedies. There's a, a semi-government body now, which has been set up to deal with compensation issues. There's a mediator, which is uh, there to deal with disputes, and all of those were set up. Oh, you know, you could say they're set up to help people, but they're also set up to stop people suing. Uh, I suspect that uh, the people who evacuated will never be fully compensated for what happened to them. Wow. That's pretty terrible stuff for, for some of the people who were actually in the radiation exclusion zone. Pretty, um, yeah, a pretty epic disaster. Yeah. So is that, that's the anniversary? It's the second anniversary today. today. Um, but I mean, there's still, a, there's still a lot of problems going on there. There's pe some people have been allowed back into parts of the exclusion zone 
because, uh, but only on short trips. Yeah. So it's still unsafe. Nobody's really sure what the long-term health aspect, or health effects will be yeah. for people who are exposed to short, to low-level radiation. Which kind of makes it a human experiment in a way. When you don't know what's going to happen, and you put people back in there. Well, then are there only allowed back in on short term? Right, so they can't stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that makes um, sense. So basically, it's still like a ghost town. Um, but yeah. Pretty yeah. terrible stuff. There are memorial services, as you'd expect, going on across the country today. Let's go to our comments. Let's. So now, it is time, once again, to go through... And I believe I was making a buzzing sound before. I'm not sure if I still am making a buzzing sound. Because uh, there's a few comments, which I've seen here, about my buzzing sound. But, we picked out the most voted for comments this week. So you guys have actually chosen these comments, not us. Um, and we're going to give some feedback about them, and we're going to choose one of them that we think was the best one. Now, this is the first comment from Dick Ghostmoon, who arrived with us about two weeks ago, I think I noticed. You, you <laughs> subbed. And this was on your piece, which Adam cut together, about yep. propaganda in North Korea and how that looks to South Koreans. And he said this, the USA actually used nuclear weapons in Hiroshima. It invaded at least 27 countries since World War II, killed over a million people in Iraq alone, but we're told that North Korea are the bad guys and who, sorry, and that we are the good guys. So who's propagandizing who? Now this caused a bit of a conversation here at Truth Loader. Everybody's propagandizing each other. Yes, it's kind of like that scene in uh, that Tarantino film. I don't forget where everyone's pointing at everyone. You move must on. have seen move it. On. I am trying to think which one it was, but let's move on instead of just me standing here. Thinking. Yeah, it's the Mexican propaganda stand up <laughs> I've just stayed in my head. Um, now, the first point is this yes, they did indeed drop two nuclear bombs on uh, Japan. I don't think they did. Well, they you did. can debate whether that's defensible. I have my own take on it. <laughs> a lot of bad things went up one in World War Two, but the next one invaded. Second World War, please. We're not in America. Well, sorry, the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Invaded at least twenty-seven countries since World War Two. This is an interesting one. Second World War. <laughs> Second World War. <laughs> sorry. Um, this is an interesting one because invaded's pro probably not quite the right term. Well, it's not. Yeah, it depends how you look at it, doesn't it? Intervened. Yeah, military intervention. Got involved. Yeah. Anyway, there's a guy called Juan Cole who's got his own website, juancole.com. He's a journalist based in the United States. He knows a huge amount about this stuff. So if you want to learn about uh, this kind of thing, to check out his blog. We actually do have an image, I think, Should of Juan do. Cole. And this is his kind of summarization of the countries that the United States has been involved with, shall we say, since the end of the World War. Second World War. The Second World War, I am very keen to correct <laughs> on the correct pronunciation of World War II. Um, now, you probably won't be able to make a huge amount of sense out of that whilst you look at it very briefly, but if you're interested in it, head to Han Cole's website, and there's also a pretty decent Wikipedia article about this very thing which you can go through. Um, so there you go. Oh, I must say, yeah, that's the big last point, killed one million people in Iraq alone. There's only, there, how many, there's six studies into this. Around about six kind of prominent ones, one of which, uh, Dick Gershman, is correct in stating it found out that there was one million and thirty-three thousand deaths as a result of the conflict, so not, you know, not... Not, not, it, not it, as a result of the US dropping bombs. Yeah, but it all or, gets a bit hazy, doesn't it? Yeah. But to, to be clear, we'll go through these, uh, the, the figures. The Associated Press said 110,600, Iraq Body Count Project, which is uh, an NGO, said 110,000 to 121,000. The Iraq Family Health Survey said 151,000. Lancet Survey, interestingly, said 601,000 to 654,000, which is significant. Bit of a jump. It is indeed. And then the WikiLeaks classified Iraq war logs suggested that there had been 109,000 deaths, including 66,000 civilian deaths. So there you go. We just had a seems like Seems like 100,000. It's a lot. 150. Yeah, it's still. It's a, a lot. lot of it's a lot of people, and it, sh it shouldn't be trivialised. But thanks for that comment because it, we had a back and forth about it, and that's what we like. We'll move on uh, to the next one. Fields of Green 09. This was again on your piece. Yeah. We did two pieces about propaganda last week. Was it Friday? It was last Friday. Yeah, so it's Friday. Next, Truth Loader, British and the BBC propaganda. It could be a long series. It could be a very, very, very long series. I think there's probably a YouTube channel just in deconstructing Western and Middle Eastern and Eastern and all kinds of propaganda. Yeah. It, you could have a whole channel dedicated uh, to it. The point is that everyone's at it. Yeah. Um, it's just the North Korean one. It's just, the reason that we did the North Korean one is that it's just so bad. It's terrible. You know, it looks awful. But then, in a sense, that that's 
slightly scarier than the idea that we might not notice Western propaganda because yeah. it just exists in our life and we don't know it's there. So it's an interesting point. Yeah. The next one, whose name I won't read out, but you can read it for yourself. <laughs> but I think a better question would be, can you be good with religion? Right on. This was on our debate with The Amazing Atheist. The Amazing Atheist and uh, uh, who else is on it? Peter Tatchell? Yeah, Peter Tatchell, uh, Professor... That guy that wrote, he, he wrote the book, The Dawkins Delusion, and we also had Joy Carter, yeah. a comedian. It was an awesome debate, and a nerd fact for you guys is this. It's our longest viewed debate. You guys hung around to watch as much of that as any other debate we've had. That's excellent. Interesting fact of the week. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Troglio died 3344. Good name. Cracking name. Oh, no. This was not a piece about dogs that were stolen. You made this one. <laughs> yeah, right? it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not the term I'm mad at No, it's not. It's not. It's just somebody else who commented on this piece said that the uh, said that the title that we gave it made him laugh. Ah, uh, well, see, which, stolen dogs. Yeah, yeah. It's scary. Dogs rescued from dinner plates. I think it was. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about. She, she, or he, I feel like it's a she. You have to guess, but we'll say she or he said, I can't watch this. I pressed pause. This needs to stop. Not that killing cows and sheep for food isn't bad, but dogs are incredibly useful, interesting, handy, loving, loyal, and they can de even detect strokes, heart attacks, cancer, earthquakes. Eating them is betrayal. I would go to war to save animals, but not for humans. So a very hard line position there, but and also, that was a top comment on that piece. That's that's just a cultural thing. You know when everybody over here was getting annoyed about horse meat being found in beef yeah. burgers? Which seems to have gone away. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and since, I don't know, that's just a cultural thing. You know, people can eat dogs if they want to, surely. Yeah, they shouldn't, that's what I think. They shouldn't steal them first. No, no, yeah, the stealing is bad. The stealing is wrong. <laughs> the stealing is wrong. Um, but eating them, it's all right. It's, it, just, what, it's, just, it's just a... It happens. It happens. I think you're going to be the next target campaign <laughs> for Peter, Petter, whatever they want to call themselves. This next one... It is Peter. Is it Peter? It is Peter. I like to call them Peter just to see if it irks them slightly more. <laughs> it is Peter, though. Um, the next one is from Ben Stiller. <laughs> ben Stiller played tennis last week. The comment's not from Ben Stiller. Against a little girl. And uh, we did a piece about it. And the top comment, by some way, is from a guy called Paft, saying, letting a little girl win is news. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not news. We did it anyway, though. We just thought it was a good video. It was a good video. It's um, just a good video. Maybe we should tag things that aren't news yeah. as good videos. <laughs> Maybe we should do it as, tag it as PR stunt for Ben Stiller and Rafa Nadal. Indeed. Or something. That, that, uh, it was funny. that picture also, if we could go back to the comment for one second, the avatar on this picture is from a meme from years ago of incredibly photogenic guy. And that picture was taken just as he was about to finish like a 10k run. And yeah, he, yeah, and, and he, he was smiling. And he, yeah, he became known as the like incredibly that. photogenic guy. It's, it's not that interesting, but I thought I'd mention it. The final comment of the week was from the Harlem Globetrotter story. Uh, I picked th this one out. We didn't have a top vote coming on this piece, but I know it's this one. Uh, the Harlem Globetrotters went to North Korea. We have a lot of North Korea today. We have. And they played against uh, some team from North Korea, and Kim Jong Un was there, and everyone clapped. Yeah. It was a bit weird. Kim Jong Un, Dennis Rodman there, just having a love in, basically. Do check out the video, pretty interesting. Dennis Rodman was there, mental. Yeah. Mr. Max 04000 said, so who won the basketball? And did you mention it in the piece? I d no, because we weren't entirely sure. The last score that flashed up in the video, we don't have a Korean speaker here, so it was, it was kind of, we couldn't really check. Mm. Well, and we couldn't find it anywhere in any English references, so yeah. it, we were a bit stuck. But the final score that was actually in the video was 110-110. Yeah, which is exactly so, what you'd expect. Yeah, exactly. It? Suspiciously, it looks like it was a... Maybe a fixed, maybe, yeah, probably a draw. Um, and I don't know. I guess they were there. They called the, the the reason they were there was for basketball diplomacy. So I don't Just, know. Maybe that was the diplomatic score to get one hundred and ten each. So nobody has to go to the gulags. Yeah, and the Harlem Globetrotters can go home without being defeated. Yeah, um, everyone's happy. And basketball diplomacy scores another score. Win for world peace. More <laughs> basketball for everyone. But they're the comments for this week. Yeah. And we have to give out a comment of the week, the one that we thought was the best. And because it caused such a good conversation, we're going to give it to Dick Ghostmoon, who's arrived a few weeks ago. You win comment of the week, so we're going to leave a comment on that. If you send us your address, we'll send you some stuff, and it's just generally going to be really good. Yep. So that well is... Done. Well done. 
hats off. We spoke about World War II and Hiroshima. Is that a Korean propaganda video again? <laughs> anyway, so there you go. We should tell you what's coming up this week, because that is the massive climax to the show, though someone won some free stuff. What's coming up this week is the biggest show we've ever done. It is. The source is coming on the show um, on Thursday, live at 7pm. We have some incredibly uh, bright guests coming on. Yep, we've got... Go well, on, you tell them. It's, it's, it's all kind of hazy at the moment, um, because it's all kind of everyone is booked, but I don't want to say just yet, but there's some people with very long beards. There's some people who've started... Uh, incredible social movements. We have incredible mathematicians coming on. We've got someone from the United Nations. Uh, very bright people. Yeah, very it's going to be people. amazing. Including one really one person who might come on, perhaps, who thinks we may well be able to live until we're 1,000 years old. Doesn't he think he's going to be the first person ever to, to, to live. live to 1,000? So if you can figure out who that guy is and leave it in a comment, then you know you figure it out all by yourselves. That's this Thursday at 7 p.m. live. So. Make sure you do not miss that. Vsauce is going to be on the show and a whole bunch of really clever people. That's pretty that's, much it. That's it. That's all we can tell you for now. So until next time, well, until Thursday, we'll see you then.